people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. At the 16th BRICS summit in Russia, Indian leadership took center stage as Prime Minister Narendra Modi engaged with world leaders to tackle pressing global challenges. His emphasis on a public-centric approach and the call for a united response underscored India's commitment to enhancing cooperation within the BRICS framework. In a pivotal meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping, PM Modi highlighted the importance of cultivating a peaceful and stable relationship, prioritizing mutual respect and the resolution of boundary issues. This proactive engagement showcases India's role as a key player in shaping a collaborative future. Take a look. The 16th BRICS summit held in Kazan under Russia's chairmanship brought together leaders from Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa to address pressing global challenges. This year's summit was particularly significant as it welcomed 13 new partner countries, marking a notable expansion of the BRICS bloc. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi participated actively in the summit engaging in productive discussions aimed at strengthening multilateralism, combating terrorism, fostering economic growth and promoting sustainable development. His contributions were especially relevant given the current global landscape characterized by conflicts, climate change and rising cyber threats. In his addresses during the summit, PM Modi emphasized the importance of a people-centric approach to tackle these multifaceted challenges. He called for a united response from BRICS nations to enhance cooperation and solidarity, ensuring that the concerns of the Global South are adequately addressed. Moreover, PM Modi also highlighted several key initiatives that reflect India's leadership within the BRICS framework. I am happy that in 2021, during the period of the BRICS, ब्रिक्स स्टार्टअप फोरम इस वर्ष लॉन्च किया जाएगा भारत द्वारा दिया गया रेलवे रिसर्च नेटवर्क का इनिशिएटिव भी ब्रिक्स देशों के बीच लॉजिस्टिक्स और सप्लाई चेन कनेक्टिविटी बढ़ाने में अहम भूमिका निभा रहा है इस साल ब्रिक्स देशों में यूनिडो के साथ मिलकर इंडस्ट्री 4.0 के लिए स्किल वर्कफोर्स तैयार करने पर बनी सहमति बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है ये मोदी रिमार्क एट दी ब्रिक्स समिट शो केस्ड इंडिया प्रो एक्टिव लीडरशिप इन टैकलिंग ग्लोबल चैलेंजेस थ्रू कोलेबोरेशन एंड इनोवेशन हिस्स स्पीच हाईलाइटेड अ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव स्ट्रेटेजी दैट पोजिशन ब्रिक्स एज अ क्रूशियल एंटिटी इन टूडेज जियो पोलिटिकल लैंडस्केप Well, it is a very significant speech where the Prime Minister covered a number of areas. For example, uh, he welcomed uh, the expansion of BRICS. Yeah. I mean, the new uh, member states. Mm. But then he also said that, uh, you know, BRICS should expand. But then he made a, an interesting and important point that... Uh, new members should be taken in based on the criteria earlier decided when they met in South Africa. Hmm? And very important point, he said that uh, the views of the founding members should be respected. On the sidelines of the BRICS summit, PM Modi held important meetings with various world leaders including Chinese President Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin and UAE President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. 
During his discussion with President Putin, PM Modi reaffirmed India's commitment to providing all possible assistance to help resolve the Russia-Ukraine crisis, emphasizing the need for diplomatic solutions. In his meeting with President Xi, PM Modi stressed the importance of fostering a peaceful and stable relationship between India and China. Both leaders agreed on the necessity of demonstrating maturity and mutual respect, while also addressing the significance of ensuring that differences over boundary issues do not disturb peace and tranquility along the line of actual control. These engagements reflect India's active role in promoting dialogue and cooperation within the evolving global landscape. जैसे भारत कहता था जब तक बॉर्डर टॉक्स नहीं आगे बढ़ेंगी तब तक हम दूसरी चीजों में आगे नहीं बढ़ेंगे अब थैंकफुली कल एलएसी को लेकर के कुछ मामला थोड़ा सुलटा है तो अब भारत चाइना के साथ ब्रॉड एंगेजमेंट डेफिनेटली बढ़ा सकता है उस एंगेजमेंट में हमारा इंटरेस्ट ये होगा अवल डेफिनेटली की लॉन्ग टर्म के लिए इस एल पे शांति का मॉडल कोई बने PM Modi's proactive stance and focus on people-centric solutions position India as a key player in shaping BRICS future. With the bloc's expansion and strengthened partnerships, BRICS is set to enhance its global influence, advocate for the global south and promote sustainable development and peace. The collaborative spirit at the summit signals a hopeful outlook for future initiatives aimed at creating a more equitable world. Let's now move to Pakistan, where Baloch activists confronted police as they demanded justice and an end to the human rights violations. Despite facing aggressive tactics, including roadblocks and mass arrest, the demonstrators stood firm, highlighting the systematic operation they endure. A report. Panic-filled visuals captured the tense scene surrounding the Karachi Press Club in Pakistan, where activists confronted police during a critical protest. Organized by groups such as Baloch Yakjeti Committee and Voice for Missing Persons, demonstrators had gathered to demand their rights and raise voice in unison against the state atrocities. Slogans and banners flooded the streets with one prominently displaying, and in silence on enforced disappearances, highlighting their cause against the enforced disappearances plaguing Balochistan. As the crowd attempted to march towards the Karachi Press Club, they were met with roadblock and a heavy police presence which prevented their advance. Tensions quickly escalated into confrontation with several activists taken into custody during the standoff. This incident underscored the charged atmosphere surrounding the protest and the relentless struggle for justice. Baloch activists condemned the police for closing off roads leading to the Karachi Press Club, calling it an attack on democratic freedom and right of free speech. Yes, look, the CM has given instructions that the CM will be able to do the right way, but our CM will start at 3 o'clock at 3 o'clock. We have not yet come to our people, but now you are seeing that the whole country has been here. The whole country has been closed, 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 the whole country has been closed. और बाकायदा आज के दिन और जितने भी प्रोटेस्ट होने वाले थे उन सबको परमिशन दी गई है प्रेस क्लब के सामने तमाम दीगर मुजाहरीन अपने एहतजाज कर रहे हैं और अभी भी उनके स्पीचेस जारी हैं यहाँ पे जो है मुख्तलिफ मकातिब के लोग यहाँ पे मौजूद हैं लेकिन बलोच का नाम सुनते हुए उन्होंने पूरा इलाका जो है सील किया है और ये हम समझते हैं हमें अपने ही सोर्सेज से पता चला है कि आज इनकी इन्होंने जो नफरी बुलाई है वो बेसिकली बलोच एकजहती कमेटी के इस एहतजाजी मुजाहरों को रोकने की कोशिश है protest aimed to spotlight the alarming rise in enforced disappearances of Baloch youth and the violence directed to local people. Enforced disappearance in Balochistan is a critical human rights issue characterized by the abduction of individuals, often political activists, journalists or ordinary citizens by state authorities or military personnel with their whereabouts intentionally concealed. 
This practice is deeply rooted in ongoing political strife as Baloch nationalist groups seek greater autonomy and control over local resources. In response, the Pakistani state has employed heavy-handed tactics including military operations that systematically target dissenting voices. Baloch groups attempting to express their concerns often face excessive force including physical violence and mass arrests. This aggressive approach not only seeks to silence activists but also aims to instill fear within the broader community deterring others from speaking out. बलोचिक जैसी कमेटी ने जो है 12 दिन की जो है वो कॉल दी है इतिहास की जिसमें आज पहले दिन कराची में हम यहाँ पर इतिहास करने आए थे लेकिन यहाँ आकर हमें जो है मालूम हुआ कि प्रेस क्लब के भी तमाम रास्ते जो है रोके गए हैं और जो है हमें इतिहास करने नहीं दिया जा रहा है। The challenges faced by Baloch activists in Pakistan are multifaceted and deeply rooted in a history of marginalization. Despite their passionate advocacy, they contend with significant risks including threats to their safety and freedom. The government's heavy-handed response to protest often aims to silence dissent, further complicating their efforts to raise awareness about human rights violations. Additionally, limited access to media and international platforms make it difficult for their voice to reach a broader audience. Despite these obstacles, Baloch activists remain resilient, using protest in social media to draw attention to their cause. Their struggle is not only for the rights of the Baloch people, but also for the preservation of fundamental democratic freedoms in Pakistan. Time now for Asia this week, the stories from across the continent. Tokyo Metro shares shot up 45% in their market debut on October 23rd in Japan's largest initial public offering in six years. Shares closed at 1,739 yen, giving Tokyo Metro one of the capital's two major subway operators, a valuation of roughly 1 trillion yen. The company's history dates back to 1920 with the establishment of the Tokyo Underground Railway Company. Seven years later, it opened Japan's first subway line between the Asakusa and Venno district of the Japanese capital. Tokyo Metro runs 195 kilometers of lines carrying 6.5 million passengers daily and its business includes real estate and retail. On October 23rd, Pakistan's eastern city Lahore topped the real-time list of the world's most polluted cities, registering an alarming air quality index of 291 around 10 a.m. local time. The city was engulfed in dense smog, prompting concern among residents and officials alike. According to the Environment Protection Agency, pollution levels might have been even higher without the government's ongoing mitigation efforts. The Pakistan Meteorological Department has issued an advisory noting that foggy and smoggy conditions are typical from November to mid-December as the country transitions into winter. During these cooler months, air quality often worsens due to the temperature inversions which traps pollution near the ground. On the evening of October 22nd, Several hundred protesters surrounded the presidential palace in Dhaka, Bangladesh, calling for the resignation of President Mohammad Shahabuddin. The unrest was sparked by an interview published in the local tabloid in which Shahabuddin claimed he had only heard rumours about former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's resignation but had seen no evidence to confirm it. In the interview, he also noted his unsuccessful attempts to secure a resignation letter from Hasina, implying that she may not have had the time to provide one. In the Shigar district of Pakistan-occupied Gilgit, Baltistan, tensions are mounting as local residents protest, a recent court ruling that classified the Sarfaranga coal desert as state land. 
This decision has provoked intense opposition from those who assert their historical claims to the region. After the court's ruling on September 19th, police were deployed to enforce it, leading to the demolition of local structures. In response, the local residents have come together to establish a protest camp. Take a look. Tensions in the Shigar district of Pakistan-occupied Gilgit Baltistan are high due to ongoing sit-in protests against a court ruling that declared the Sarfaranga coal desert as a state land. The chief court's decision issued on September 19th has faced strong resistance from local residents who assert their historical claims to the land known as one of the highest coal deserts in the world. The situation escalated when the district administration deployed police to enforce the ruling, leading to the demolition of structures built by local residents on September 23rd. Protesters continue to demand justice, reflecting a long-standing contest over land ownership involving residents and immigrants from past conflicts. Frustration over the court ruling and the subsequent police action has intensified, leading to clashes between two groups. जबकि ये सरासर दिन के रोशनी में एक दहशतगर्दी है, दहशतगर्दी है, हम पर जुल्म हुआ, बलवा हुआ है, एक मुनाज़म तरीके से हम पर हमला हुआ है और हमें ज़दुकुब किया गया है. اور ہمارے عورتوں پر خواتین پر باقیدہ حملہ کیا ہے زخمی ہے ہمارے بارہ افراد زخمی ہے شدید زخمی ہے اور دو تین افراد اب بھی ایڈمیڈ ہے ریسیڈنس انکلوڈنگ ڈیسیننس آف دوز ڈسپلیس ڈیورنگ دو وارز آف نائنٹین پوری سیون اور نائنٹین سیونی ون ہاف کنٹیسٹیڈ اونرشپ کلیمز تو دی ڈسپیوٹڈ لینڈ فور ڈیکیٹس In reaction to the recent court ruling, some local residents have set up a protest camp in the Sarfaranga desert, garnering substantial support from women and children. In the Sarfaranga, there is a lot of pressure here. Today, there is about 1 month and 4 days. And our pressure is the right of the state, the right of the state, اور ہمارے زمینوں پر بلکہ ہمارے گھروں پر حملہ جو ہو رہا تھا ریاست کی طرف سے ان بھائیاں پر قبضہ کرنے کے لیے اور مہاجرین کے جو لوگ ہیں کہتر اور ارتالیس کے ان کو قبضہ دلانے کے لیے ایک غیر منصفانہ فیصلے کے مطابق لہٰذا اس کے احتجاج میں ہم ایک مہنہ چار دنوں سے یہاں پر بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں As the protests in the Shigar district unfold, they highlight the broader issue of land disputes in Pakistan-occupied Gilgit Baltistan. These conflicts, rooted in historical grievances and local identities, have long fueled tensions between residents and state authorities. Today, we delve into Gujarat's remarkable transformation from the heart of India's white revolution to a pioneer force in sustainable agriculture. With advancement in modern irrigation, a focus on high-value crops and farmer-centric policies, Gujarat is leading the way in cultivating a market-driven and eco-friendly farming revolution. Take a look. Gujarat, once central to India's white revolution, is now driving a new era of sustainable agriculture through high-value crops, modern irrigation and farmer empowerment. Known as India's growth engine, its agriculture and allied sectors have grown at an impressive 9.7% annually, surpassing the national average of 5.7%. Gujarat is reaping the benefits of two decades of pro-farming policies that have transitioned the state to a diversified, market-driven agricultural economy. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel, initiatives like Soil Health Cards and the Jyoti Gram Scheme continue to promote sustainable practices and expand irrigation. Today, उत्तर गुजरात किसानों अनेक प्रकार पाकनी संभावना बनी 
आज बनासका लगभग सीतेर टका हिस्सो सूक्ष्म सिंचाई वालू बनी गयो है एटलू नहीं आ सिंचाई और नवी टेक्नोलॉजी कारण जो मदद मिली है यो लाभ आखा अपना गुजरात का सूका भट विस्तारों मिली रो As Gujarat's Chief Minister Narendra Modi launched the Krushi Mahotsav, an annual event connecting farmers with modern techniques and expert advice, boosting productivity and promoting sustainability. Since 2001, Gujarat's farmers have shifted towards horticulture, with crop area increasing by 181% and production by 326%. By 2022 the state's fruit production reached 82.91 lakh metric ton across 4.48 lakh hectares with major crops including mango banana citrus pomegranate and sapota Gujarat is also a leading producer of spices like cumin fennel coriander and chili covering 6.57 lakh hectares with an output of 12.01 lakh metric ton it is among the first states to implement the model APMC act enabling farmers to sell produce outside regulated markets the government promotes high value crops like dates and dragon fruit kamalam through subsidies and market support improving farmers livelihoods and fostering sustainable profitable agriculture इरिगेशन में जो टपक प्लान है फवारा प्लान है सरकार की ओर से जिसमें बहुत सारी 30 परसेंट फोर्टी परसेंट सब्सिडी मिल रही है उससे किसान सब आ, सब फायदा भी उठा रहा है इरिगेशन का पूरा का पूरा मोदी सरकार ने जो स्कीम निकाली है बहुत बढ़िया किसान के लिए है और अब साल में छः हज़ार रुपये अकाउंट में आते हैं छोटे खेड़ू के लिए जो किस्तों में दो दो करके वो भी हमें मिल रहे हैं सब The Gujarat government is also encouraging farmers to adopt natural farming techniques that reduce chemical use, improve soil health and boost biodiversity. It promotes traditional crops like millets which are well suited to these methods with the Dang district designated as a hub for natural farming. Rajya ma prakrutik kheti ne protsahan apvani disha ma sarkar katibaddh chhe. Gujarat खेड तो सारी बात ये कि आप मान्य राज्यपाल श्री तो प्राकृतिक खेती तजज्ञ है राज्य खेड तो सतत मार्गदर्शन कर रहा है राज्य में अठार लाख की वु खेड तो प्राकृतिक कृषि मेटी तालीम अपाई है अत्यार सुधी आठ पॉइंट पांच लाख खेड तो गुजरात में प्राकृतिक खेती अपना Gujarat is a dairy powerhouse with over 10000 milk cooperatives producing around 150 lakh liters daily encouraged by the proactive approach of the government many farmers in Gujarat have adopted modern farming techniques that combine crop cultivation and livestock raising allowing them to diversify their income sources schemes like the Jyoti Gram scheme which provides 24 hour electricity for irrigation along with drip irrigation techniques in arid regions like kutch and saurashtra have transformed barren land into productive fields jahan pe kutch pe hum soch bhi nahi sakte to usme wahan pe abhi dadhim hota hai khajur ka jo pehle ka jo portion hota hai usko hum log yahan pe bolte hai kharik to kharik ka badi matra mein kisan utpadan le rahe do do teen teen fasal le rahe तो उसका बहुत बड़ा एक चेंज आया है गुजरात में अंडर चीफ मिनिस्टर भूपेंद्र पटेल द गुजरात गवर्नमेंट इज फर्दर इनहसिंग फार्मर्स वेलफेयर बाय डिजिटाइजिंग लैंड रिकॉर्ड्स, सिग्निफिकेंटली इंप्रूविंग द ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस बाय चैंपियनिंग मॉडर्न टेक्निक्स एंड एम्पावरिंग फार्मर्स गुजरात सेट्स अ पावरफुल एग्जाम्पल फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया दिस फॉरवर्ड थिंकिंग अप्रोच not only boosts productivity but also promotes environmental stewardship positioning gujarat as a leader in the agricultural landscape
Gujarat is redefining the future of agriculture, setting a new standard for sustainability. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.